In a previous lesson, we looked at how we can use units like millimeters of mercury or millimeters of water to measure gas pressure. But usually when we're measuring things, there are many different units that we can use, and it's important to understand how to interconvert them. For example, if I'm measuring length, well, I could use centimeters, or I could use inches, I could use feet, yards, or meters, or miles. So in this lesson, which is very short, we're going to look at a few common units for measuring gas pressure, and then we're going to look at how we can use conversion factors to convert between them. If you're a little rusty on conversion factors and significant figures, it would help to go and look at those old lessons before you do this just to make sure that you have a, a firm foundation. So some common gas pressure units. You're already familiar with one of them, and that's millimeters of mercury. Miller, millimeters of mercury is sometimes also referred to as tors. And this is in honor of the Italian scientist Torricelli, who is the first to realize that you could use mercury in a glass tube to measure gas pressure. Don't let this confuse you. Millimeters of mercury, tor, it's the same, it's, it, it's a different name for the same thing. Another common gas pressure unit is the atmosphere. And this seems a little bit tricky at first because atmosphere is also a physical thing, the air surrounding the Earth. But it's also the name of a unit. So we can have, for example, 2.7 atmospheres of pressure. It's just a unit like pounds or miles or inches or whatever. And the third unit is called the kilopascal. This is also named after a scientist, Pascal, who did a lot of work on force and pressure and so forth. There are abbreviations for these. Millimeters of mercury and torres, these are already abbreviated. Um, atmospheres, we can abbreviate as ATM, and kilopascal is abbreviated as a lowercase k, uppercase p, and a lowercase a. In order to do mathematical conversion between these guys, we have to have some sort of equation that explains how they all relate. So here that is. We can say that 760 millimeters of mercury, or 760 torr, if you're that sort of a person, equals 1 atm, which equals 101.3 kilopascals. There are three different things in this equation, but don't let it confuse you. Just as 760 millimeters of mercury equals 1 atm, this also means that 760 millimeters of mercury equals 101.3 kilopascals. As we've done previously in earlier conversion factor problems, we're going to be using this equation to write conversion factors to go between these different units, depending on which we want to start with or which we want to finish with. So let's get a little hands-on experience with converting these guys working through this problem. The pressure inside a car tire is 225 kilopascals. Express this value in both ATM and millimeters of mercury. We'll do atmospheres first. So as you remember from conversion factors, we always want to write conversion factors before we start the problem. We're starting here with 225 kilopascals, and we're going to want to multiply that by something that's going to give us a new answer. So we're converting from kilopascals to atmospheres. There are two conversion factors that we can write. The first is going to be 1 atm is over and thus equals 101.3 kPa. That's one conversion factor. Another conversion factor that we can write is that same one, but it's just flipped. So we can write 101.3 kPa divided by 1 atm. These guys are both perfectly good, but which one do we want to use? Well, remember that when we do a conversion factor, what we want to do is we want to end up canceling out the units, the old units, and ending up with new units. We can only cancel out units if the unit is on the top on one side and is on the bottom on the other side. So we're going to be using this conversion factor because kPa is obviously on the top up here and it's on the bottom down here. This is the one we're going to use. So we're going to say 225 kPa times 1 atm over 101.3 kPa. Since kPa is on the top here and on the bottom here, these guys are going to cancel out. And we're going to go through and we're going to do our, our math. Remember, the final math is going to be this times this divided by this. And my final answer is going to be 2.2 2 
two. The reason why I round that to three significant figures is there are three numbers here, three digits here, three significant figures, four significant figures here. There's one here, but this is a, this is a definition. This is, this is a whole number. So we don't worry about this. We disregard this. We take, obviously, the lesser of the two, three or four, and we choose one with three. So our final answer has three significant figures. Now, what are the final answers? Well, KPA canceled out, so we're left with ATMs, which means that our final answer is going to be 2.22 ATM. 2.22 ATM is our final answer. If the method that I use to go through this, canceling units and doing significant figures at the end, if this confuses you, it's important to go back and look at the previous units that gave some information on this because uh, I'm worried you'll be confused otherwise. Let's look at another example. We did KPA to atmospheres. Now let's go from KPA to millimeters of mercury. Again, we're going to start with 225 kilopascals. We're going to be multiplying that by conversion factor. As before, there are two valid conversion factors that we could write. The first is 760 millimeters of mercury over 101.3 kilopascals. That's one possible conversion factor. Or again, we can flip it. We can say that 101.3 kilopascals is equal to, and hence is written over, 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, again, we want to choose a conversion factor that's going to get this KPA canceled out. We can only cancel out the KPA if it's on the top here and it's in the bottom on the conversion factor, which means that, once again, this is the conversion factor that we're going to use because KPA is on the bottom. 225 KPA times 760 millimeters of mercury divided by 101.3 KPA. Now, did we set it up right? We did, because KPA is on the top here and on the bottom here, which means they cancel out. Our final units, the only ones that are left, are going to be millimeters of mercury. So I crank through. I do this on the calculator. It's a little bit harder. Remember, 225 times 760, the answer to that, divided by 101.3 KPA. The final answer that I get there is 1690 millimeters of mercury. Obviously, the answer that I get for this is much longer, but there are only three significant figures in this number. We don't worry about the significant figures in this because the smallest is three, which means that I'm going to round this to 1690 millimeters of mercury, and that's my final answer. So converting between these different gas pressure units is not that difficult. You just want to remember to choose the correct conversion factor so your old units cancel out and so you get your new unit. This expression right here, 760 millimeters of mercury equals blah, 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 is usually always going to be given to you by teachers. It's going to show up on tests. It's going to be in the textbook. So it's probably not something that you need to memorize. Only memorize it if your teacher says it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, it'll usually always be a given.